Hi guys, this is Vidas and Rusha. And today we're starting uh, episode 31 of Ask Vidas and Rusha podcast. And today's question was sent by Albert. And he writes, I am a newbie. I play piano and I started organ practice and classes a few months ago. At the moment, working in BWV 553-560 to and trying to absorb everything I can about this universe. Now I am going to listen to all of your podcasts. Thanks for your great job. As former pianist, I find them pretty easy, but uh, the most frustrating thing is the little independence of the feet that I have with respect with respect to the hands, specifically when the feet and the left hand decide to go together independently of what is written in the score. Typical beginner's problem, isn't it? So, Osha, uh, Albert is practicing eight little preludes and fugues, right? Yes. And he's having a problem with hand and feet independence. Sure. Do you, remem- do you remember the time when you had the same problem? Yes, I remember that during my freshman year at the Academy of Music. What was the first piece you played, do you remember? Well, it was G minor, Prelude and Fugue, uh-huh. little one. First Prelude and then Fugue right away or not? Yes, and then C major, Prelude and Fugue. So the Fugues are in this collection usually much, much dif- more difficult. Yes, but when at the, during the spring exam I played the Prelude and Fugue by G.S. Bach G major G, in G major. major. Actually it's very rarely played. Yes. I don't think I ever heard it, you know, played. Yeah, I've just I just said read it uh, last week. Yes, the last line of the fugue is, you know, very demanding for the beginner because the hands are playing up and pedals are going down mm-hmm. and you know I remember that spot just killed my brain during that time it was very hard to do it right especially as as you know as as Albert said you know playing feet down and left hand up right that there is a place in this in this G major uh, the, end fugue. Of the, fugue. the end of the fugue yeah mm-hmm so how did you uh, overcame this overcome this problem well by practicing you know separate just pedal and then you know pedal and right hand and then pedal and left hand working in combinations Uh, and playing slowly at the beginning small fragments or entire fugue well only that last line last line yeah so Albert, if you are having a problem like like Osha had uh, many years ago, probably it's best to slow down significantly, like fifty sure. percent of the concert tempo at least, right? And then and then repeatedly, many many times, play a problematic sp- spot, starting on the downbeat and ending on the downbeat too, because it will help you to uh, connect two fragments. Right and um, and uh, play in combinations, as Soja sure. says. Right. That's the most helpful way, you know, to help yourself. Osha, when when a person cannot really play, let's say, two voices together, left hand and pedals, does it mean that if they should go back to to solo part playing, left hand alone or pedal alone? Yes, I think so, yes. Mm-hmm. Do single voice, first of all, and then add the second one. Exactly. Because each step adds significantly great burden, and uh, it actually doesn't have to be this way. It has to be very gradual. So only progress with the next step when you can do previous step at least three times in a row without mistakes. But don't give up. This this problem, actually, this type of problem is one of the most common, you know, for most beginners. Mm-hmm. Because most of us are, you know, if you write with your right hand, that means, you know, that your left side is less developed. And then it gives, you know, trouble while playing left hand with the pedal. 
Yeah, remember that you pick up things with your right hand most sure. of the time, not with the left. If you are right-handed, of yes. course. So then left hand needs to do more work, grabbing sure. some uh, some uh, keyboard exercises and keyboard um, episodes. But you know what you could do also? Uh, you could sight read more pieces, not only from Eight Preludes and Fugues, but pick any other collection that you love, right? And say read one piece a day and not all the voices because you will be, you know, struggling significantly, but maybe one line at a time, maybe left hand, maybe the pedals, maybe uh, all, all parts separately, you know, and take one piece a day. Uh, also, would you think this method would help in the long run? Yes, definitely it would. So when you were studying at the Academy of Music um, for the freshman year, did you sight read new music regularly? Well, not so much because, you know, overall I had so much music to learn that, you know, <laughs> all my music was, you know, new. sight read. Yes, yeah. new. I remember looking at that big stack of music on my piano and I was just overwhelmed. If for because we had to do organ, we had to do like piano, we had to do like choir conducting and learning mm -hmm. all bunch of you know pieces, and then of course like chamber music, mm -hmm. chamber ensemble, and so on and so forth. Organ music was like forty five minutes per semester, right? Well, at least at I least. think it was almost an hour. Yes, so two recitals per year you had to prepare. Yes. Piano music at least like twenty minutes for f per per semester, right? Yes. Um, choir music also about that the same amount. We and had like six pieces of choir music mm -hmm. to prepare for like semester. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, chamber music also maybe yes. fifteen minutes. Yes, like yes, like whole sonata for one semester. So imagine every week you are s playing. Uh, one hour, two, three, maybe three hours of new music, right? sure. like preparing for three recitals yes. <laughs> at the same time. It's it's also it always new things basically, and you after a while of doing this, at first like first couple of months is hell, right? Yeah, hell. But then you get better and better, and you say read things more easily, sure. right? So we really recommend sight reading. Sight reading many more pieces than you would re regularly play and practice, uh, you know, and polish. That's that's the best strategy that you could take in the long run. Okay, and um, of course, don't forget that we have um, fingered scores and complete fingering and pedaling. Um, prepared for you from eight little preludes and fugues, right? Uh, yes. How many hours do you think that would save for people uh, writing it for themselves? You know, how many hours it would take? Actually, many because you know, writing down fingering is very time consuming. Mm -hmm. Did you like writing it down? No, no, no. I, I didn't myself. But it's so helpful to have a score with fingering and pedaling because it saves. Well, it, if if you know what you're doing, it's still, it's still at least um, one hour per page, right? If you're just writing it down very quickly, one hour per page. So if you're practicing three three page prelude and fugue for this from this collection, and you know you know exactly what you're doing you would save at least three hours. But obviously people don't know how to write write fingering and pedaling, right, Osha? Yes. So that's, that's it's a big help, maybe 10, 20, 30 hours of, of saving time uh, would help if you have this course. So check them out, really recommend it. And of course, if you sign up now for our Total Organist, program you can have all of them for free uh, for the 30 days for trial period so if you like it keep it and, and subscribe later but if you don't like it you can just uh, cancel before the month ends 
and uh, you can do that at uh, organduo.lt uh, uh, slash total-organist and of course send us more questions we love helping you grow okay this was with us and usha and remember when you practice miracles happens